It was supposed to be music. What is the, where's my intro music? Here it is. Hey guys, welcome to Coding Up 30. I think I'm live. I never know. I never know when I'm live or not. How you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing great. Already got two likes instantly. That's how massive my community is. Instant two likes, instant two viewers. So anyway, doesn't matter because I love all of you guys because you guys are awesome. Now, as you guys trickle into the stream, we're going to talk about today one of the most important superpowers you have as a new developer learning to code um, is your ability to say no. And I'm going to talk about it more what I mean by that. But if you guys could hear me, let me know. Uh, so I make sure that actually the sound's working, everything else is working. Web Dev Junkie, amazing to see you. By the way, if you haven't gone to Web Dev Junkie's channel, great channel, great dude. And I always love it when he jumps in here on the stream. And today, you know, I really wanted to talk about when you're starting out learning to code, this, what does it mean to say no? Um, and how it could help you to progress much quicker because there's so many different things you could be learning. And there's so much cool stuff out there that it's almost impossible not to try things out. And a lot of times, if you're brand new and you're like, oh, I want to break into the field. And then you're like, do I need to know Storybook? Do I need to learn TypeScript? What is Keystone JS? You know, what is, why is GraphQL or Tailwind or name any other bajillion type of things that are out there? And the truth is, when you're starting out, it's very easy to spread yourself too thin when learning and you're actually not going to be able to um, get anything done. And I know this from experience because, you know, that I waste a lot of time, like jumping from tech stack to language to language to trying different things. And it, believe me, it's very easy to get caught up in all this new cool tech. But at the end of the day, it's just a, you know, something that's going to just pull you in a direction that you probably shouldn't be going. So when you're just starting out, the most important thing, in my opinion, is to make sure that you guys learning the basics, learning the most important stuff that moves the needle, per se. And believe it or not, all this other stuff, you will learn it as you need it. Like I'll give you an example. Um. I was trying to solve a problem and, you know, after looking online, I'm like, oh, there's a better way of doing this um, and there's a different data structure that I should be using that I haven't used much. And so that's when I learned about it, you know, do it as uh, necessary. But anyway, let me slow, say hello in the comments. We said hello to uh, Web Dev Junkie. Hey, what's up? How you doing today? Yo, I like it. Um, I'm doing good. I kind of you know, started the stream in my head and everything made sense. And now I'm like, what am I going to talk about? No, we're going to talk about saying no to certain things when you learn to code and making sure that you have your set constraints for your learning because you can't possibly learn everything. It's very difficult. And if you try to learn everything, it's very easy, very easy to get distracted. So one of the last questions, like on one of my live streams, is like, do I use Storybook? And to me, like, no, I don't use Storybook. Well, honestly, after they asked me if I ever use Storybook, I went on and I set it up with my React application and I use Storybook, right? I got distracted. I got pulled away from the things that I was already doing. But the thing is, it's like, you don't need Storybook if you're just starting out. Like, um, you probably don't need Storybook for a very long time. And probably when you get a job, they're going to use Storybook anyway and you're going to learn about it. Or something like, I get another question like, man, do you need to know Redux when you're learning you know, React? No, you don't. You don't need to learn Redux. And actually, in my opinion, learning Redux with React at the same time before you even understand how React works, it's detrimental. And I know that because I did it, I was learning React, I started learning Redux, and it really slowed me down because I didn't know what part was Redux, I didn't know what part was React because I did not know enough about React at the time. And so 
look, it's okay to slow down your learning and just get good in the fundamentals like HTML and CSS. You know, get great at JavaScript and learn React. And it's very important to not rush it. Like you should be comfortable building something out before you get in to those other things. And you know, web dev junkie here, a lot of these shiny tools provide very little benefit uh, to waste time hacking it into your project. Find something that works and just build something 100%, 100%. Like, and that's exactly like what I would encourage you guys to do. I'm not saying that you shouldn't learn things, but I'm saying that you will learn them eventually and it's no big deal if you don't learn them all at the same time. And so setting up a foundation and learning the basics is super important. So this ability to actually not add to your workflow, but to remove things, this ability to say no is very, 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 very important. And I am not the best at it, but I try my best to be like, look, Paul, you can't learn everything because I want to, I want to learn everything. I want to use every possible tech stack that I can, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to be able to become good at everything. Even to this day, I'm still not using TypeScript because it's not a requirement of my job. And yeah, people like TypeScript is awesome. Every Yeah, TypeScript is awesome. But for now, I'm perfectly fine with writing JavaScript, using React, and, you know, using prop types if I had to. Uh, you know what I mean? That's perfectly fine. It's no big deal. It's not the end of the world. Hey, Andrew, how's it going? Great to see you here. Um, man, love all these people jumping on saying hello. And Web Dev Junkie here. I think you also mentioned in the past stream, if you don't know the problem the tool is trying to solve, don't use it. 100%. Like one of the best quotes, and I wish I came up with it, but this is exactly what somebody said to me. Um, and I mentioned it like WebDev said in the last stream, if you don't know what problem Redux is solving, then you probably don't need to use it in your application. For instance, if you don't know why you're using that tool, you don't need it. So a lot of times coming back to, you know, Redux is a great example. Storybook is a great example. Why, like, like if I just, but it's so easy to get sucked in. I was gonna say, why would you use it? But because you hear people say it like, oh my God, like, like storybooks, everybody's using it, every company's using it, you need to use it. But if you can't build something on your own, like you really don't need it, you, you know? So I thought this was gonna be a longer video of like talking about this idea of like finding focus in your learning, making sure that you start with the basics, making sure that you set constraints. Like, you know, I wanna learn every possible language, but I know it's not realistic. So I'm focusing mostly on JavaScript, React, because that's what I do at my job. And this is what I'm gonna keep focusing on. I'm like, I do wanna learn C Sharp or I do wanna like build a little project with PHP for fun. I wanna get into web scraping with Python. You know, man, I wanna know what DevOps is, you know, but I only have 24 hours in a day and I wanna really be focusing on the things that number one, I'm getting paid for to do right now, make sure that the thing that I'm getting paid for I continue to become the best that I can be and not to introduce too many things that pull you in too many different places and ways. Um, anyway, let me know in the comments how you guys are doing because honestly, like I don't just do this for me to talk because I could talk forever, but I'd love to hear from you guys. What have you been doing? You know, what are you guys working on? Uh, talking about kind of like what difficulties you're having even if you agree or disagree with what I say, I love disagreements, by the way, you know, like, you know, one day somebody's like, Ooh, I'm, I'm not going to say anything to Paul because I don't want him to feel that I dis." No, I love disagreement. I think it, the, the truth is disagreeing is how people learn. They learn through disagreeing. And you know what? I don't mind changing my mind. You know, if you give a valid point, I'll be like, great, great. I'll change my mind if it's a valid point. Yeah, so here we go. Evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. I hit the wrong, wrong one. Here we go. I came on just as you were talking about fundamentals. It is so easy to get discouraged when you feel like you have to revisit the same topic numerous times. Be patient. Remind yourself that. And um, let's see. Everyone learns at a different tempo. And that's 100% true. And the thing is, for me at least, 
I didn't really like I've been trying to learn web development for a long time guys and I like I started long time ago and that was actually one of the reasons I didn't make progress because I felt like I had to move quickly I felt like I had to be like okay if I don't learn this in like three months or I had to learn every other language uh, possible to me but the truth is you will only you will learn things as they come to you you can't rush learning and what I started thinking learning is literally you practicing a skill and you just have to go through the work, go through the effort and practice the things. And the more you practice the things, the easier they will become and the easier they will stick. But for beginner web developers, especially if you're starting with HTML, CSS, and this also applies to JavaScript, this also applies with React, I wanna show you kind of one thing that I still do to this day uh, to help me to continue to learn, at the same time, see what other people are doing and the way I, you know, if you're just starting out with HTML, CSS, obviously you would just do it in HTML, CSS. If you're learning JavaScript, you could do the same thing with JavaScript. And then what you could do is after you build a thing in JavaScript, recreate it in React. But I'll show you what I've been doing kind of that's been helping me learn. And again, obviously this is more tuned to like front end development at this point, but Anybody who's starting out in web development, I think this is a good habit and practice to get into because it will teach you to learn by doing and number two, get you into this habit of constantly building things. So let me say, um, JR Bugs, good to see you, man. No, great to see you. Thank you for stopping by. And by the way, if you like this podcast, you like what I talk about, you know, definitely smash the like button. Obviously, you don't have to, but more importantly, like I want this to be not just about me talking, but I want it to be about you guys asking questions, you adding to the conversation. So anything that is on your mind, let me know in the comments. I will definitely love to hear from you guys because if you guys weren't here, like, like I don't, I'm not cool because, you know, I'm here on YouTube talking to you guys. Like what makes this show cool is you guys coming in and giving your feedback, talk about it, be having discussion about coding and web development. Yeah, 100% with that junkie. I feel like Paul could sit here and talk for an hour, even with one viewer. Need your professional podcast uh, talents. Bro, like anytime, like you want to, I would love to have you on the show. I'd love to go on your show. We could talk about coding. I know like everything comes to like how much time do we have, but man, yeah, I love to talk. And if you watch my very first podcast, um, Maybe not so much in production, but this idea that it's true. I will talk to zero viewers the same way as I talk to a million viewers one day. And that's because I am very excited about development. I'm really like, I'm a student. Like, be, like I'm not a master. I'm not like no guru. I don't know what I'm doing half the time. I'm just like, I just have curiosity to keep learning and growing in the field and sharing my experience and helping others achieve the same thing. Brian, what's up, man? Good to see you. Um, thank you for jumping in on this live stream. Um, and so, yeah, so anyway, let's kind of talk about like something that I keep doing and doing. So I'll, I'll share my code pen and then we'll keep talking about have to be able to say no, have to be able to, you know, set constraints and only learn the things, you know, that you need to get to the goal that you want to get to, right? If you want to become, I mean, this seems obvious, but if you want to become a React developer, focus on becoming the best you can in React. Like you don't need anything, you know, like don't try to learn everything at once. You know, if you want to learn C Sharp, learn to do C Sharp things, you know what I mean? Anyway, let me have a little bit more coffee so I could power my brain. Because sometimes my brain doesn't make any sense. Uh, but by the way, this is something that I've kind of started been doing. Um, I've, you know, if you're brand new, this is a great practice, especially if you're doing front end is what I've been doing recently is, and I'll be guilty of this. I'm going to kind of like let you guys know in a little secret. I've been doing so much react lately that for me, look at my head move. Wow. This is crazy. Stop moving head. Um, doing so much stuff with react that it's actually second nature for me to code stuff in react and and sometimes i forget well how would you use vanilla javascript for that so what i started to do is actually focusing on finding a random website 
and here's one this is from keystone js by the way keystone js is awesome i just discovered it recently i mean i love strappy but keystone also allows you to make a super quick uh, API where you guys can use GraphQL in the back end and it allows you to ho hook up to PostgreSQL or to MongoDB, whatever your heart decides. But anyway, I'm just using this as an example. So what I started to do is like find the site I like and be like, oh, wow, look at this card. How did they did it? And then I would inspect it. And again, if you're like an expert developer, not that you guys are going to learn anything new, but if you're starting out, this is a great way to learn by copying you're like oh look at this div oh, okay look at the stuff they did and what i or like wow this is kind of interesting how did they do that you know and what i'll do in code pen i will recreate that you know i'll show you one example i will recreate those components in you know i made that button i made that little card and i will recreate basically exactly what they did you know on their website and so it's a great way to learn and you're learning by building stuff and sure you could copy and paste stuff for sure but i'm not saying you should copy and paste but i'm saying like as you build this you know if something you're not sure exactly how they did it or you're reading a css property that you don't know what it is google it you know so you could learn from it and Apply it. And what I like about this, this kind of, this is a great way for beginners, by the way, because you could make it as complex as you want. Like if you're a beginner, you could do this with HTML and CSS only, right? So you could recreate the things that you see on the site just with HTML, CSS. And what I started to do is I started to recreate it with HTML, CSS. And then what I do is, you know, as you guys could see here, this is actually React code. So what I do is I read, and I'm using style components. I'll tell you why I like style components uh, in a minute, but I recreate the same components, you know, with React. And then what I would do is I would see, well, how would I also do this with JavaScript, you know, while, you know, adding functionality and stuff like that. And this way you're learning through building and you're learning to see, you know, first of all, that you have to start out with HTML, CSS, of course, but especially if you dive into the world of React, it's important to kind of know the problem React solves. And it's kind of hard to know what problem React solves until you try to make stuff with JavaScript. And so I think it's important to kind of like do these exercise so this is lately what i've been doing i think it's pretty cool for me learning purposes let me know if you guys do something similar like this so let me know how you guys learn new things and i think the most important part um to learning is by failing and building every time you fail you learn something new you iterate through that process and you get better and better and better you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of like what I've been doing and focusing on. And I did uh, some coaching and I realized that there is like, man, my mind is all over the place because I just a lot of thinking going on because I'm trying to figure out what is the best way to coach somebody to learn web development, to learn you know, HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, or React. I'm trying to figure out if I were to teach someone what would be the best approach to do so and i think i figured it out i think i figured it out and like if you think about learning a lot of times um and i think this type of learning could only be done one-on-one -on -one, by the way like you could it'll be very hard to do in a tutorial but instead of having uh and tutorials by the way are great i learned so much from taking you know udemy courses i always recommend john smilga's courses because they're phenomenal because of so much practice that you get you know, through his courses, it'll definitely give you the confidence that you're actually learning the stuff that you're doing. But I was thinking one-on-one, -on -one, what can I do? And I realized there's a way to teach where you basically either demonstrate something for the student or you, you know, solve a problem or you code something out and the student watches it. They basically receive the knowledge through watching by your example. And I realized even though it's great to do that and a lot of traditional ways people teach that way, they'll show you an example or they're walking through how to code something and then they'll give you a homework assignment, you know, go code that thing. And then they give you feedback. And what I realized that that type of teaching is missing one of the most important things, which is the 
you're not really forcing the student to do a lot of the work. You're really not helping them because they're passively just listening to your lecture, watching your example. Of course, they could be more proactive and ask questions, but if a student is shy or maybe they're just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, 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 and they won't even ask, like, ask a question. Um, let me look at the comments. If I started uh, from web dev junkie, if I started over with learning code, I would try to find someone else around my skill level above and pair code with. Yeah, 100%, that's very important to do. And I think like pair coding should definitely be something that everybody should be doing. And just recently I uh, hooked up with somebody else because we were trying to solve some you know, problem, like how do you calculate if you have like bunch of date ranges, like 30 of them, and they're all different. How do you calculate if the date ranges overlap? And if so, how do you calculate the total of all dates, but not taking into account the overlapping days? And so we kind of passed some ideas and th that was pretty good. Like solving problems, like in a pair programming is super awesome. And yeah, front end masters have awesome tutorials. I did take a lot of their courses. I like Kyle Simpson's JavaScript course. Uh, he's also the guy who uh, wrote, you don't know, uh, JS. And there's a lot of, a lot of different ones. And yeah, Jay Arbuck says, I agree, pair programming was my favorite component of my bootcamp. We did a driver passenger model where one would talk through the code and the other would code on a shared screen. So this is like very good. We pair and mob program at work all day. That is, uh, Fantastic. And so this is exactly what I'm coming to. I don't want the student that I'm going to be coaching to be a, you know, passive participant. So, and I've been testing out this teaching model that I've been doing that is pretty good. The only drawback that I see in it is that the people that are going to be learning from me are actually going to learn stuff and they're going to move on from like from me much quicker because instead of feeding them stuff, I'm teaching them how to think and solve problems on their own. So I'm not going to have like students that I'm going to be my students for years because eventually they're going to get better, learn and move on. So, and that's not a bad drawback to have because honestly, I want people to get better, make improvements and keep going and learning. So anyway, this is what uh, my idea was, is that, you know, you sit down with a student and kind of doing like what I did here. Let's go uh, find a website and be like, hey, can you create this navigation bar? And even if the student is brand new, like, you know, I get it. And I would just stop talking, have them open a VS Code editor and see where they start. And basically, I would only answer questions or give them feedback based on what they're doing. And I would always force the student to think about it first. And they might say, well, I don't know where to start. And then I could be like, okay, well, the first thing you have to do, bam, 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 bam. But basically what I wanna do is make the coaching section where the student drives the progress, they do the work, they fail, and I just give them feedback that helps them to get back on track. And if there's something they don't know, I could explain it to them, tell them if I wasn't here, how to look it up and go from there. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but that's something I've been doing and, you know, that's kind of like, man, we got so many people on 10 people. That's like a record. You guys smashing the like button, 12 people, another, record. you guys smashing the like button. Like there's no other business. Yeah. Hands-on learning hundred percent is the best way. And I feel that people that are in the driver's seat when they're learning, like you force them to do work, they remember the stuff better because they were forced to think about it. And Somebody that I had a coaching lesson with today, you know, they said like, Paul, this was like difficult in a sense that like you were making me responsible for my learning. And I think that is exactly what we want to do. We want to take responsibility for our learning when studying, because at the end of the day, I feel when you're at work, you're actually have to perform and you have to build things. And so you need to get comfortable being to struggle through the problem. You have to be able to verbally be able to talk about the struggle that you're having, be able to talk about your code, how you're trying to solve your code. I think very important. And what I realized by forcing students 
early on to get comfortable explaining to me what they're doing and why they're doing it is slowly going to prepare them for the interview because honestly and this is all something that I, like I'm still learning and had to learn the hard way but the worst thing you could do at an interview is not verbalize what you're doing or get some sort of uh, audible cues that you get from the people that are interviewing you it's okay to ask hey you know i was thinking of doing this but to be honest i'm not sure if this is the right path am i moving in the right direction especially if you're doing like algorithmic problems i think people should not be shy to ask and web dev junkie says you should be the one coding and tell the students to tell you what to type man because of the vs code uh live share i don't even tell people to tell me what to type I actually have them start typing on their own and I'm there to help them if they need it. Let Gabe be equals true. Currently mowing my lawn. Just wanted to say hi and give babe, my brother. Thank you so much. Uh, glad that you're listening and yeah, mowing your lawn. You know, I was going to mow my lawn and then I was like, no, no, I can't. I can't. I got to do this live stream. So not to make excuses, I'm going to have to mow the lawn tomorrow. Uh, but uh, you know, that's that's awesome. So yeah, being like proactive, and coming back to this conversation, we're just jumping out late. Uh, talk about the most important superpower that people could have is the ability to say no. It's not only in the context of restricting what tech you're learning, so you could spend more time learning less things and becoming better at those things. Like for me, I really committed to let me spend more time on JavaScript and React because that's what my work is involved this is what i want to get better at and once i get to a point especially if you don't have a job yet once you know okay guys let me like like before i go into this like my my brain is like wants to talk about so many different things let me so jr buck says i learned that the hard way when asked how or why i wrote a specific work it worked isn't so oh yeah because it's thing at work it worked isn't sufficient enough yeah true and hey han hi everyone hey how you doing yeah so this is the thing like my mind is just gonna explode there's so many people and maybe you already have a job fantastic and if you do have a job i do appreciate if you guys share what process you guys use to kind of help you stay focused to make sure that you're getting to where you need to go as quickly as possible now my journey was very difficult because i tried to learn everything under the sun to like because i thought i needed i started with c plus plus i even learned c i did ruby like when it was popular and then <laughs> i've been learning so long that ruby became unpopular again and so the idea is that if you don't have a job there's so many ways to get a job but you have to choose one if it's react and javascript do react and javascript if it's angular i don't know why and javascript do angular and javascript if it's you know laravel and php stick with that if it's c sharp and asp.net stick with that but don't try to learn everything at once because you won't like i didn't start learning back end until i got my first job i got my job based on my ability on uh, creating UI with React and JavaScript. And then when I finally got my job, I started working at that company. I started learning C Sharp and working with the back end. And so you don't have to try to become a full stack developer all at once. The most important thing for you guys is to narrow what you're learning to be able to get job ready as quickly as possible. And uh, web dev junkie here's another great point i deleted twitter and it helped me to stop caring about people hyping technology hard to say uh no to tech when everyone in your online tech bubble is saying yes and 100 percent true and restricting yourself from using certain things will help you in the long run eventually you will learn those things but learn them organically as they're presented to you by oh i have a problem and this tech that i need to use happens to solve that problem but you need that problem first initially if you don't have that problem don't try to add tech like when i'm using react like and i'll use react as an example like i don't start like let me set up redux store right away because i don't even know if i need it maybe the way i ma like make my state maybe like i won't like i won't need to use redux maybe you know using 
the what the hell is it called? Jesus Christ! I've been punched in my head so many times. Guys, don't do boxing early in your life because it will break your brain cells. My brain cells are broken because I've been punched in the head so many times. Uh, but yeah, maybe Context API will solve that problem for me, or maybe I will just put everything to local uh, storage, which is perfectly fine to do. So unless you need reason to use something, like don't try to push tech on you. Um, unless you need it, like for instance, like like I used Storybooks earlier in the example, like uh, like I just recently used Storybook, and the only reason I use Storybook, by the way, um, I'll tell you in a second. But f like, there's no reason for anybody who's starting to learn to code to use Storybook. It, it, it doesn't. It's not a problem you have. Like, what problem does Storybook solve? If you're by yourself as an individual, like Storybook is makes sense if you're working on a team which has like a component UI library that's a great place to build your component UI library stick it in storybook that way all other developers of the team could see it see the documentation but as a individual react developer who's starting out you don't even have a job yet why would you use storybook makes no sense you don't even need to learn storybook and you know, uh, it literally doesn't make any sense. And that's kind of what we have to do. We have to kind of be like, okay, if I'm starting out, what is the bare minimum that I need to learn to get to where I need to be? And look, uh, Dominic says, I am job hunting in November, sticking with JS and React. Yeah, and continue to improve your knowledge of JS and React. Continue practicing your react and javascript interview questions continue to build stuff with react and javascript so you get really good at react and javascript so when you go to that interview you do very well i'll give you an example i went to an interview with react to javascript in mind and i'm doing the interview and the guy's like oh um we use typescript and he started asking me questions in typescript i'm like Hey, you know, like I know that you guys use TypeScript, but I haven't used TypeScript. I know the problem that it solved. I mostly use JavaScript and React. And you know what he said to me? He's like, yeah, not a problem. If you start working here, you'll pick up TypeScript. No, no problem. So let me ask you the same questions with JavaScript and React. And it's perfectly fine. And a lot of this new stuff you will learn as the need arises. And... Hey, what's up? Do you have any advice to start freelancing as a full stack? Because I've never did it. The first thing I'm going to say to you, by the way, are you really good at full stack? That will be my first question. Because you actually have to know the thing that you're doing. So um, you need to be really good. The competition is for freelancing is really hard. That's number one. Number two, are you good at sales? Are you good at talking to people? Are you good finding clients? Are you good at doing your own books? Are you good at billing people? Because that's what you're going to be doing as a freelancer. So, you know, freelancing is not as easy as like you go on some website and all of a sudden you're going to have clients. Like the only people that have clients are people that build their authority on those websites like um, Upwork or whatever. And they have a reputation. If you're starting out and you don't have a reputation, like look at my channel. I have, like when I started the channel, I had like zero subscribers. Nobody knew who I was. I didn't have a reputation. So what I was saying, nobody even listened to what I said. And now over time, building a following, building a reputation, more people starting to take me seriously. And that's the exact same thing you're going to do as a freelancer. You will have to build that reputation. You're going to have to build a bunch of projects that, People give you good reviews and you're going to have to get your own clients. Like I did freelancing and the hardest thing about freelancing is getting those clients. If you have a magical supply where you could get clients, you know, by all means, freelancing could be an option for you. But I see why a lot of people, you know, want to go into freelancing is because they can't get a job the regular way. And I get that. And I could talk more about uh, that but in terms of being successful at freelancing you need to be really good at what you do and you need to be really good at marketing and sales 100 percent and if you're not good at marketing and sales you need to find somebody who's good at marketing and sales and able to get you consistent leads and the reason why a lot of people fail at freelancing is because they can't get enough people into the door to pay money to pay their bills. And I hope like that makes sense. And 
If you have a follow-up question, let me know. But what I would say, if you want to eventually do freelancing, number one, build a skill first. Make sure you're really good at it. Number two, I hope you have working experience where you worked for another company where you did that. And number three, then you go freelancing. I'll give you an example. It's not web development, but it's the same steps that I took because before I became a developer, I ran a successful martial arts school. And... Before I opened up my own martial arts school, I had seven years of experience working at a martial arts school and running it as a manager. I knew how to get clients. I knew what uh, martial art business involved. I knew what I had to do. I knew how to run a curriculum. I knew how to market the services. I knew how to bring people in the door. And after seven years of working for somebody else, when I started my own martial art business, I was actually able to get uh, far and be very successful because I built the experience and I built the authority. Uh, so I hope that makes sense. Hacking, now what, what's up? How you doing? Dominic, great advice about not jumping around and learning everything. I uh, jumped on storybooks because of job apps. Man, you know, like job ads. They all, the job ads, they say like you need everything. You need to know. Like I love job apps that the, the ads that like you need javascript you need html css you need to know react you also need to know java you also need to know php and laravel and you also need to know asp.net you also have to be able to fly a spaceship also you need to be at least 62 you need to be like blah blah they just put random stuff into those jobs so you need 20 years of experience for junior developer roles like i don't even trust job ads anymore i just apply and see how it goes you know what i'm saying uh, that, that's pretty ridiculous if I get stuck while coding my own projects, what can I do after I don't get a solution online? You just keep trying. You just keep trying. So I'll, I'll give you like, I mean, you just like, if you get stuck, you should be able to like take a break, walk away. Maybe the solution will come to you. But if you're learning and you're building, first of all, there is an answer online somewhere. There is an answer online somewhere because somebody had that problem at least a thousand times. You just have to Google more and then Google more specific things. A lot of times, like I'll like I'll start my Google search broad and then I'll start to kind of narrow it down. One thing I was looking at to how to like compare ranges of dates. By the way, if you guys haven't smashed the like button, smash the like buttons for you awesome people in the stream. You guys, I'm glad to have you guys here because without you guys, I'll be some random dude on the internet. Now I'm just some random dude on the internet who has cool people that come on to his live stream and have good conversation with, which is fantastic. So what I would say is um, if you get stuck while coding and what can you do after I don't get a solution online, you just need to figure out clever ways to ask those questions. So um, I needed to figure out how to do like compare date ranges in JavaScript. So first I started, how do you compare date range in JavaScript? So I like, you know, you'll get a bunch of random answers. And then a lot of these answers, they will only give you like, how do you compare two different date ranges? But I need to compare like 20 date ranges and I don't know how to do it. And so um, once I figured out how to compare date ranges, I'm like, oh, how do you tell if they're overlapping? So with Google, Compare date ranges overlapping, blah, 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 in JavaScript, and then I'll get no results. And I'm like, geez, I don't know how to do this in JavaScript. There were some results, but I'm just using that as an example. So then I would be like, well, thinking more about, well, overlapping date ranges, it's like we have one date range, we have start date, we have finish date, then we have another date range that's overlapping, right? I'm like, wait a sec, that's like a segmented graph in math. I suck at math, but I kind of remember, oh yeah, it's like a line chart. So I like Googled, like, how do you tell the, or compare the overlaps, or how do you know that two lines are overlapping, and blah, blah, blah. And then going down that rabbit hole, I was able to figure out, oh, right, I need to loop through, uh, my whole like array of ranges it has to be sorted first i learned it the hard way and then i take the first range i take the end date i compare it to the start date if the start date is minus like whatever the end date whatever the difference is if there's a negative number then they're overlapping if they're positive number, they're not overlapping. and if it's overlapping take the start date of the first range and add it to the last set like the next range uh end date put them together because what i needed to do i needed to sum up the total of uh, all overlapping days uh, in a range, whatever. That, uh, like not to 
bore you guys with the details but yeah just keep asking on google more detailed questions more detailed questions and don't be shy to step out to other things like uh, sometimes the question you're trying to answer is figuring out the algorithm and maybe part of that answer for the algorithm is learning like some sort of math formula or seeing a similar example of how they done it to help you with that how can i get another developer to assist me uh by the way like you need to like just like you're watching this youtube channel um, you just need to kind of get out there and make friends so then you could have people like there's so many Discord channels and we have our Discord channel. But become a member of a Discord channel doesn't have to be mine and then ask. People will be willing to help you. Also, ask questions on Stack Overflow. People are going to – and yeah, Web Dev Junkie answered my question. I should just point to you guys. Uh, I joined a Discord that has other devs learning stuff 100%. And Paul, do you do a lot of automated testing at work? And honestly, no, not at this moment. And this is something that I have to get into learning. That's on my to-do list to start doing automated testing. I work for a very small company and a lot of the, we have to kind of go through stuff much quickly because we're trying to get our MVC out the door so we could actually start getting clients. And so we do a lot of manual testing. Um, because we don't have that many developers and we have not super tight deadlines, but we have to get stuff kind of moving through fast because we want to get something out there. So the investors will be like, oh, we kind of see how this works. Let's put some more money into it. And I think then we're going to slow down and start doing more automated tests and stuff like that. Any Discord dev community example? Yeah, I'll give you uh, like a lot of people have some, but I'll give you the invite to our my Discord and... Um, if you like to join, don't have to, um, but it will, you know, you could always ask questions there. Uh, yep, yeah, and I do have one and I just put a link to join. If you want to ask, uh, yeah, you can join mine. Also go to web dev junkie. Um, he has a discord also. Um, if you want, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to put a link here, because um, sometimes like when other people comment it will you know like if it's a URL it might not like it but uh, yeah you're more than welcome Web Dev Junkie to invite people to your Discord it's HTML and CSS for, for me for now yeah stick with that until and then move to JavaScript we have Coding Addict here by the way um, John Smilga most amazing guy ever. I'm not just saying it just to say it because he invited me on his amazing podcast every Monday, 8 p.m. Pacific time. No, no, I'm not just saying that, you know, to brown nose and say, oh my God, I'm like, no, he's literally like a good human being. And I was really uh, happy and ecstatic to be invited to his uh, podcast live on his channel, 8 p.m. Pacific time. So if you guys haven't seen the last one, because it was awesome. Join us this Monday because it's going to be awesome for sure. And I'm glad to have you see stopping by. I kind of like embarrassed a little bit because I want to keep myself as professional as possible for Coding Addict. But these live streams, they go either way. Sometimes they bomb really bad and sometimes they don't. But as long as we have fun, that's the most important part. I'm like, I hope he doesn't judge me too bad and not invite me again to his live stream. Uh, Twitter is also a place to ask questions. I hate Twitter, but I started to use it recently. Um, a lot of helpful devs on there, at least with JavaScript. Yeah, just don't put any politics stuff on Twitter with me. Like I unfriend anybody that shares politics stuff. I unfriend on Twitter. I unfriend on LinkedIn. Like I just don't want to see it. Uh, uh, it's like, um, yeah, Tech Rally. Here he is, coding adding in the house. Look at Tech Rally dropping all the big names, getting that 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 love. That's a good question. Cody, uh, Cody, uh, Attic wants to know, hey, Paul, since you live in Texas, do you own cowboy boots? No, I don't. Uh, I need to buy me a pair. I got to get me a hat. But listen, I'm all about this Texas life. I'm not going to lie to you. I need to get a horse, a truck, you know, a cowboy hat, cowboy boots. And, you know, I got to get a ranch. It's all going to happen one day. Cody Attic still iffy on the name of the podcast. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Co coding Addict. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Coding Addict. Come on. Come on, John. Come on. Let's not do this. Let's not go there right now. Let's not go there right now. Yeah, I have to 
<laughs> Jay, our bugs like we discuss. I listen. I'm all. <laughs> let's keep it. Let's keep it civil in the comments. Let's talk about coding. Let's talk about actually. You know, 2024 JavaScript for president. That's what I'm saying. JavaScript. I don't even. You know. Let Let's do that. Line dancing, to be honest, I tried it once because there was this cute chick I wanted to date because she was into live dancing. And I was like, I was like, I was like, I hate country music, by the way. This is the funny part. I can't stand country music. Like, and, and coding at it, I know you're joking. I know you're joking. Uh, I can't stand country, like, like, I can't stand country music, but I love me some fiddle, violin, and like the whatever the. The banjo music is awesome, but like typical country music, I can't stand. And I, because of that, I thought I would hate line, dan line dancing. I was like, line dancing is going to be crap. Like, I'm going to hate it. And I ended up loving line dancing. I was embarrassed to admit it. But here's a fact, guys. This is something you don't know about coding after 30. I'm going to tell you um, this. Uh, I'm not embarrassed at all to tell you this, but... When I ran my martial arts school, I was always looking for what I, like as I taught my class at a particular time, but I also had so much free time and I was like, I'm paying rent anyway. What classes can I fill here that will add more profit to the business? And at that time, Zumba was super popular. Zumba, like everybody loves Zumba at the time. And it's such a like amazing thing. And so I became a Zumba certified instructor, no lie, me and my sister. And I used to teach Zumba classes. They were phenomenal and amazing. Great exercise, by the way. If you guys were uh, wanting to exercise, it was insane. Yeah, bluegrass. I love bluegrass. Yep, 100%. You should check out bluegrass. Like, I love bluegrass music. But the rest of the country music, like, whatever. Like, I don't even know any country people like Garth Brooks or whatever like and not my thing and it's just listen like I have weird taste in music you know and yeah if Paul gets boots he could become Paul Texas Coding Ranger I love that I love that 100% Paul Texas Coding Ranger man if I ever hit a million subscribers on this channel I am going to tattoo and you could record that right now if that ever happens I will tattoo Paul Texas Coding Ranger somewhere on my chest 100% uh, tech rally oh no I see where this is going Zumba live stream by Paul give your subs a shock yeah one day one day no I, I, I kind of hung that down and coming back to this topic let's ability to say no so here's the thing guys I started coding late and I knew that I'd be competing with a lot of people in uh, in this tech space. I knew that there's going to be so many people. So I had to become as good as I can in the thing that I was learning as quickly as possible, at least job ready. So let me put this in perspective. One of my favorite hobbies was jujitsu. And because it was my job for a long time, I used to train seven days a week. I also, you know, loved watching me some movies. I loved playing video games. I loved like going out dancing and stuff i love doing all this stuff and when i decided to make this transition i literally said no to 80 percent of the time and started to think like paul you are going to be a developer what do web developers do what where do they spend their time online what kind of videos do they watch how do they spend their time and i realized and like that for me to become a web developer, I have to do web developer things. So I started going to meetups. I started making friends on LinkedIn with people who are developers. So then whenever I, like, I need to get a job, I could at least have someone I could reach out to. And, and then also I was like, I only have 24 hours in a day. So something has to give. So if I continue to watch Netflix like I used to, if I continue to like watch the news or play video games like I used to, it's not enough time for me to put towards becoming a developer. So I had to say no to a lot of stuff in my life and I continue to say no actively to a lot of stuff in my life. And this is why I like those of you who don't know, I used to have a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu YouTube channel, right? Like if you go to YouTube, YouTube, I mean, it wasn't huge because it's mostly for like my students, but you type BJJ and BJJ and friends, 
Like this was my channel. Yeah, so check out. Uh, so I'm here with Sean. Uh, uh, don't nobody wants to hear nothing. I used to have a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu YouTube channel. I was all about that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu life. If you search, uh, like uh, whatever, let's not get carried away with searching. But you know, I gave that up because. I knew that I can't do two things well 100% of the time. So I gave up my uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu channel and I started this channel. I started this channel because I wanted to continue to talk about coding. I wanted to continue talking about development. I wanted to continue to be involved in the community because all I want to do is be the best developer that I can be. And the reason why I started this channel, and this is one of the reasons why I do the Tuesday night live code, because I want to keep getting better at talking about coding. I want to keep getting better at talking through the code. And when I make a mistake, I want to be able to you know, deal with that and learn from it and move forward. Uh, but 100%, John Prine was a good country artist. I'm going to have to check it out. I definitely give people a chance, but for a lot of like the popular country music, I like the old like school, like, you know, uh, you know, it's kind of tough for me, you know. Do you know a website, Front, front End Mentors? Yeah, I, I know that website. I checked it out and i think it's good because they give you a challenge uh but do you really need a website you know to give you challenges if you really need one you could use it but it's a great website i have nothing bad to say but like i said if you're getting into web development um don't subscribe to bjj and friends because it's going to encourage me to release brazilian jiu-jitsu videos guys but if you're looking to get better like what i do is like i show an example just find a random website like i mentioned this before earlier find a random website like i found here check out how they build this you know see if you could build this from scratch if you get lost go into your inspector see how they did it you know build some examples in code pen you know and obviously like this website will only show you the HTML and CSS, but go the extra level, build it in HTML and CSS, and then build it in React or JavaScript, whatever you guys want to do. And I use style components a lot. A lot of people don't like style components. I'm going to tell you why I like style components, because I'm lazy. I'm lazy. I'm so lazy that I don't want to like have to rewrite my CSS. And the reason why I like this idea of JavaScript or CSS in JavaScript is because literally I could copy and paste my code from one place to another and it most of the time, like 99% of the time is just gonna work. And so what I started to do is every component I build in React, I use style components. And in my case, it's funny because I say, don't learn storybooks until you have a problem that you have to solve. Well, I want to have my own component library and I want to have one place to keep all the things that I built and document it nicely. So that's an issue I had. So hence I'm using storybook, but, but, but I just like, you know, style components because it's just super easy. I could take it from one project to another project to another project. And if I build my style components correctly and I like all I would have to do is just put whatever theme that I want and it will update everything to look really nice. But, uh, you know, we could talk about that later more. I know Tech Rally here, he gets very particular about style components because he doesn't like style components. It's fine. Like, it's fine. It's not hurting anybody's feelings. Hey, Lucky, I slept for one hour tonight. Uh, now I am ready for action. Now I'm ready for action. Let's go. Man, Lucky, you're like a beast. You, you... Like, this guy doesn't sleep when I do live streams. That's how committed he is to this live stream. If you don't smash the button for anything else, smash the like button for Lucky's commitment, 100%. And Wheeler Walker Jr. is the only country guy I know and listen to from time to time. Yes. And listen, I listen to a lot of good music. I listen, like, like death metal to the craziest rap you guys would ever imagine. I have really eclectic music likes and there is actually some country music i like as well and let me tell you bluegrass all the way i will listen to bluegrass all the time uh because i'm a big fan of music in general so you know yeah man i love all the involvement i love all the communication you guys rock you guys are awesome man you guys are the greatest ever community ever to be here so 
We talked about why you should be able to say no to tech because you want to make sure that you keep your time focused when learning to code. We also talked about it, how it's not just applicable to the cool tech that we have access to and trying to learn everything, but it's also applicable to cutting out certain activities that don't provide value to you. And the way I started thinking about this, and this is only like once I started really working a lot of good recommendations. I'm actually curious to like just start Googling and listening to country music on my channel, but I know I'm going to get copyright stricken. So I'm not going to do that right now. But one thing that I started to do like to help me think about my time is this. Okay, when you're at home, you all have the same 24 hours a day. And so you want to make sure that you are participating in as many value building activities as you can and so i'm not saying don't play video games i'm not saying don't watch netflix i'm I definitely hang out with your family by the way uh, but i'm not saying don't do certain things but put things in perspective so like whatever you make online i'm just going to use 40 dollars an hour for this let's say you earn 40 dollars an hour and you work 40 hours a week by the way um yeah should you work more than 40 hours a week we could talk about that later but you work 40 hours a week. So your hour is worth $40. So some people, they think about like this. While I'm at work, I put my time. That time is worth $40. And that's true. But if you don't engage in value building activities at home, I think it's going to be really hard for you at work to increase that $40 to 50, 60, 70, and 80. So your potential, let's say now is $40. So when I'm at home and I want to go on whatever instagram and spend an hour scrolling that's basically 40 dollars an hour task right me scrolling and am i willing to pay myself 40 dollars an hour to scroll for like through twitter no no i don't that's a low value activity and it's not adding any value to me so instead of spending an hour on Twitter, I will spend an hour reading some documentation. Some people say, well, it's boring. This is your free time at home. You should do something fun. Yeah, but that free time at home that I would have wasted watching, binge watching Netflix, the worst. I hate Netflix. Netflix sucks, guys. Like, if you don't think Netflix sucks, I don't know what you guys think. And I'll tell you why Netflix sucks. Now, not that you guys ask or wondering. Have you ever started watching a show on Netflix? You watched the first season and you were intrigued. You were like, wow, this show is awesome. And then you're like, I can't wait to season two. And then season two comes out and you're so excited and you watch on Netflix and you're like, oh my God, I wonder what's going to happen in season three. You wonder, you can't sleep because you're thinking about the story that they've woven, the characters, and all of a sudden season three, season three, they cancel it. They're like, no, the show wasn't good enough. Netflix Netflix cancels all my favorite shows. Every show I want to watch and know what happens in season three, they cancel it. It never happens. And so I hate Netflix. Netflix is the worst. But anyway, what I'm coming back to this thing is so what I do is I try to put that in perspective. It's like, what can I do at home that will increase my value at my company or me as a developer that will allow me to next review ask for more money and that's kind of how i think and that helps me a lot easier to say no about um what activities i should do and i still play games but i don't play games like for eight hours like i'll play for two hours on the weekend um anyway that that's kind of like Horace, hi, I'm here lurking. Well, thank you for lurking with us. I really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, even about lurking, you could uh, ask us. Um, would love to. We, I, I love everybody on my channel equally, as long as you're adding value. Say no to adults and trashy YouTuber. These are live destroyers. Hundred percent. I hate people that whine. People always ask me, Paul, like, why are you always positive? That's obvious. Because nobody wants negative, whiny people in their lives. Like, how, how much whining can you stand in one life? Like, oh, I did this. Oh, I'm in my car. Look what's happening to me. I can't take this. I had this drama. My mom, like, blah, blah. Shut the f up. Stop whining. Nobody wants to hear it. And people, oh, Paul, you're so judgmental. Let me tell you this. Raise your hand if you have some issues in your life. Raise your hand if you had hardships in your life. 
Everybody has hardships. I'm not special. You're not special, right? You have stuff that happens to you, terrible things. I had stuff happen to me, terrible things. Terrible things happen to everybody, but somehow we all have to keep working. Somehow we still have to walk towards our goals. Sometimes, like, we still have to do all this stuff. So quit your whining. Nobody wants to hear it. That this is like I'm whining about whiners. I'm part of the problem. Sorry, guys, for whining about whiners on YouTube. Like, the point of this channel is for me to talk about my struggles, talk about all the difficulties I had, all the failures in my life, and talk about that the remedy to this is to keep moving forward, to continue doing the work, make sure you have a feedback cycle that allows you to kind of see if the steps you're taking towards your future are the correct steps or not, and then continue working. So that's why I like someone like John Smilga. You watch his YouTube channel, it's all about learning. He doesn't talk about lifestyle drama, he talks about how, like, the things that you could do to become better as a developer. And that's why I like his channel. There's a bunch of YouTube channels that I hate. I'm sure the people are great, but they don't provide, like, any value to me. Like, even entertainment value. You know, the only channel I used to like because I think he was trolling everybody hardcore is Tech Lead. But now that Tech Lead is a crypto channel that's zero value to me even like trolling wise so the most important thing you guys could do is make sure that you guys continue to do the work because it's hard right it's not easy like no one owes you anything and no one is going to like give you opportunities you have to create your own door you have to open your own door and you have to walk through on your door and that's why a lot of people that watch here that i talk to here like you're all about putting in the work, going after it, getting after it, and doing what's necessary. And the truth is, out of everybody that's watching YouTube, like, I'm actually curious, like, of this statistic. What's the, like, percentage of how much time you spend on YouTube versus how much time you spent in your code editor? Like, I would love to kind of hear about that. But... Because at the end of the day, it's we're really about what we do. You know what I'm saying? It's all about doing the work and going through the steps. Like I would have never became a developer if I didn't stay up late, if I didn't work hard, if I didn't continue to learn, if I stopped listening to the haters. I had so many people in my family, they're like, you'll never be a developer. You're never going to learn this stuff. You're to this, you're to that. And the truth is, who cares? Like I'm going to give my best try. I'm going to give it my best shot. And I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep moving. And that's what I did. And now I have a job. And there's a bunch of people that ask me for my advice. They give my advice. You have to listen. No, you don't. But a bunch of people did. And now some of them got their own jobs as developers and to me like seeing those success stories is awesome i get really excited because it shows to me that it's not you know like anybody could do this who was willing to put in the work the caveat being is that you should at least like the work that you're doing you should at least enjoy what you're doing you know what i'm saying because if you don't enjoy this it's very difficult so very important that's kind of you know i give a lot of opinions on the saturday live stream by the way on tuesday nights i do a uh 7 p.m central time i talk about building a project i talk about you know we do some live coding i answer questions i talk about why i did and the reason why i have that live stream because at the end of the day those of you guys who are looking to get hired looking to get a job at the end of the day you have to develop the skill and number two, the way you show off that skill is having a portfolio project. But a lot of people, I did a poll, and a lot of people don't have good projects in their portfolio. And one of the reasons could be, if you look at my GitHub, is that I have like a graveyard of unfinished projects. And for the longest time, that kept me from getting anything done and having anything in portfolio. I would start a project. And I would get to a point where eventually it either got too complex or I got this like discouraged or I decided to do something else. And so I moved on to something else and I moved on to something else and I never had anything finished. And the one thing that you will learn quickly when you get hired is that you get rated on your ability to deliver. 
right? You need to bring things to completion. And one of the ways to practice about bringing things to completion is saying, I'm going to build this portfolio, making sure that your scope is not too big that you could actually finish and actually for the project that I'm building on my stream. And uh, I made the scope very, very simple, which basically I wanted to be able to, okay, present a portfolio project. I wanted people to be able to like, I wanted people to see the details and give and add ability to people to comment. And so I created a quick mock-up and I kind of did that. And once I complete that initial MVC where the comments work, the likes work, we're still in the process of finishing the comments, you know, then I'll add another feature. And so, you know, I built this very simple, simple, simple application uh, we got going on here, right? You know, I made the scope very like small so it's not discouraging so we built this you could see the details of the projects that people are building you know you have the comment section to um if you want to like you have to be logged in so we have uh, authentication where people could log in i always forget my password let's see if i remember this time nice once you're logged in you see the portfolios that you like you're able to go to the details section um let's go where there's a comment you could add your comments here. This is the feature that we're still building, so it doesn't work. But keep the scope small so you could actually build the thing that you want to build. And then add features as you complete features. You know what I'm saying? Don't try to, I'm going to make this, that's going to do this, 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 and that, because you'll never get it done. And, you know, and then this is how you're going to complete projects for your portfolio and have deliverables. Uh, very important, very important. Um, let's come back here to our fantastic viewers in our comments. What are your thoughts about apprenticeships, internships, etc. for coders older than 30? And what's the longest should we stay uh, to gain experience? I would say the longest is six months to a year. Um, and sometimes if doing internships, they might be three months. If you can't get hired, like definitely try to get an apprenticeship or an internship. Um, if it's paid, it's amazing. It's a free, like I'm not a big believer you should work for free, but if you're not getting any opportunities, you know, you can do an internship, you know, for three months for free and then try to get hired. I think there is value because that's experience you can put on your resume. One way that you could game the system, it's not gaming the system, you actually have to do the work. Like, but it's like a loophole. And this is the only way that I would talk about freelancing when you're looking to get a job my thoughts on freelancing, you have to be good at the thing you're doing and you should have work experience before you become a true freelancer. But something you could do to build experience is something I did. I'm gonna show it to you guys on my GitHub. And so if, not GitHub, on my LinkedIn. And so if you don't have experience, when I first started, um, no one was hiring me. And 100%, keep the scope small and deliver on time. And that's exactly what you guys should be doing. And if you practice this, you will be able to build your projects for your portfolio, actually finish them, and then eventually have a portfolio which has three to five excellent product uh, projects. And by the way, if you're building projects for your portfolio, don't just randomly stick projects that you created from Udemy or any other tutorial that you took because there's a thousand other people that did the same thing. In the worst case, take that project that you did, change the theming a little bit. If it was a uh, online store for phones, make it an online store for flowers and change the theme in the bare minimum because you want to make sure that the project that you built or used from a tutorial that somebody else has built and you just followed along, um, at least doesn't look like the project you built because you got to assume there's a bunch of other people that, oh, they're like, oh, I took this tutorial. I have this project. Let me just throw it on uh, my portfolio. I'm not saying that it's wrong, but I'm saying at least do the due diligence to make it look different enough. But the best thing you could do is based on what you learned. Let's say you took John Smilga's HTML, CSS, JavaScript course, and React course. Based on what you learned from those courses, build your own thing. And this is kind of the whole point for that Tuesday night stream, why I'm building my own project and not doing a clone of somebody else's. 
it's okay to do a clone for learning, but if you're building something for your portfolio, nobody wants to see a goddamn clone of anything. People want to, they're not hiring you to build clones. They're hiring you to see that you could make original work and produce stuff yourself from scratch. So make sure you guys keep that in mind when you're building your portfolio. By the way, when you're starting out, no shame of just putting stuff from Udemy into your portfolio because otherwise you would have nothing. But when you have something, really make it a goal to build original projects to put into your portfolio. But coming back to this LinkedIn here, let me share my LinkedIn. Please don't spam me on my LinkedIn. I'm an actual person. I'm not lying to you about stuff that I do. Like that's why I'm so public online. Let me close. I have like a lot of, let me close my messages. Not that I get any bad messages here, but you know, there's no need to see that. But we go to Paul Braslavsky, right? We see my experience. And as one of the experiences you guys are gonna see um, here, what the experience you guys are gonna have, I see fluid logic. Fluid logic, by the way, and it's listed on, oh, I closed it out. It's listed on LinkedIn. Where did I go? Let me go back there again. I don't know how to navigate a computer. How am I a developer? I don't even know how to use a goddamn mouse. What is going on? So here we go. This was a company my friend and I started and we posted it on uh, LinkedIn and I worked here as a web developer. We got one client, didn't really go well, but I practiced coding and all the things that I built, I built in a way and I counted under this umbrella of fluid logic. So then I was able to add them on my resume. You see here, worked as a junior JavaScript developer for one year and six months building my own projects for freelance clients, even though we weren't able to sell a lot of services. But I did build themes where I took static HTML. And you sh if, like, don't lie, you got to build that stuff. But I built themes. And if people would ask me, I would be able to show them the things that I built. I took HTML websites and I converted them to React single page applications. And I counted as my experience. And this allowed me to get a job as a you know, developer at VersaSuite, uh, this company that I worked at. By the way, in terms of good places to look for opportunities, if you're not being able to be hired, there's a lot of companies like uh, Point Marketing was a company in Greenwich, Connecticut, which did marketing and they also set up websites. So go after marketing agencies that do Facebook marketing, that do, you know, SEO, because they also have a department where they provide a service where they build basic websites. And a lot of that times they're using stuff like Squarespace or they're using, you know, WordPress where basic knowledge of HTML and CSS is required. And so I got an internship that eventually translated into a job and on a bare minimum working with basic HTML and CSS and WordPress where I was writing some code but not a lot of code, I was getting paid 25 bucks an hour and that was a great experience that counted to help me landing my job at VersaSuite. And now I worked at Red Hawk Research which is an amazing company that I love because it gives me the flexibility to have free time to do YouTube. So I really appreciate those guys. Um, but let's look at the comments. Let's see if you guys have any questions. Yeah, don't be shy. If you haven't smashed the like button, smash the like button uh, for all of you guys in the comments. I appreciate all of you guys showing up because it's the time you're taking away from your day to support the channel and more importantly, to give back to the community by asking questions, by participating in the chat. So don't be shy. Ask those questions. Let me know whatever you guys uh, want to know about. Yeah, that's a great strategy. This is something like I recommend, like every tutorial should be done at least twice. Once uh, following along and the second time doing from memory. Yeah, 100%. What I started to do um, now that I know how to code, whenever I watch a tutorial, I'll see what they're going to build next. I try to build that thing first and then I watch how they did it. But there's many different strategies that you could find. But the stress, this point here that Idrissa says it's the keyword being from memory. So what I would suggest, and this is why I tell people you got to build stuff from scratch. 
because when you're doing a tutorial, by the way, let's say the tutorial, you know, whatever tutorial you're doing it, they show their code, they show you how to walk through it. Basically, they have their code. And what you're doing by writing that code in your code editor, you're literally just tracing, you're copying, you're copying. You did not come up with that code yourself. You did not solve that problem. The instructor solved that problem for you. And it's important when you're learning to see that solution, but you're not learning, you're you copying what they did on screen and when you complete the tutorial you learn the basic concept of coding but you did not build that project yourself you literally copied so you're learning but it's not as good if you turn off that tutorial and it doesn't have to be at the end of all let's say i'm doing a tutorial and they just introduced array uh, function like arrays and they just introduced array methods let's say map for each you know, reduce, whatever it is. Once you go through the video, turn off the video, and then spend a few minutes thinking about what you learn actively in your mind. You know, go walk around your house for another five minutes, and then come back, open an empty computer terminal, and see if you could yourself, you know, implement those examples of, you know, uh, array methods that you learn, like, filter or map for each or reduce and see if you could do it on your own you know and that that recollection part is going to help you become better because you're forcing yourself to think yourself and figure out the solution on your own rather than using someone's notes as a crotch and we all do it at the beginning but this should be a goal that you guys are striving to accomplish eventually I don't think my strategy is better. It's just different. I think like there is no cookie cutter approach of what solution fits all. You have to figure out because everybody learns different. So, it, you know, you got to figure out what works best for you. I just talk about these ideas uh, that worked for me and I just like want to share with you. But it doesn't mean that my approach is better than somebody else's approach. It's like I just want to open up you guys to different opportunities and you guys decide what works for you what doesn't work for you what makes sense what doesn't make sense but the most important part is that you're part of a community that's positive enough that whenever you get discouraged when you go hang out with that community all of a sudden you feel excited about going back to coding and coding again and this is why like i try to keep everything motivational and not drama specific or whiny because i want to encourage you guys to not give up to pursue your goal to continue studying and to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish because at the end of the day i genuinely care for you guys and i want you guys to improve your life and improve your future and listen i'm still in the process of learning i'm no master i'm no guru i still don't know like i like 90 percent of the stuff that i need to know uh to continue to grow and you know i'm just like you i'm in the same boat i might be a couple of steps ahead of you and i know a lot of you guys that watch this youtube stream a lot of you guys are better developers than i am and that's fine Th that's why i want to have this community where we encourage each other to grow together yeah yeah, I have a like, bunch of older videos. So you guys are more than welcome to check them out. But that it's one of the things I, and this was not that old, but because this is something recently I just, like started to say. But tutorials don't get you hired. They teach you how to learn and code. But your ability to build projects and talk about the code that you wrote, that is what is going to get you hired. So if you cannot yet. And the keyword being yet. If you cannot yet build something from scratch and talk about it and answer questions about the code that you wrote, then you're not going to get hired. So you need to practice that. You need to build projects yourself and you have to get out there. And um, yeah, tutorial hell is a real thing. 100%. And like I did this before. I wanted to show you how to uh, get out of tutorial hell. So I'm going to do a live reenactment of how do you get out of tutorial hell for you guys right now. Okay, how do I how do I get out of tutorial hell? Let's see. Let's let's see if I could do a live 
example for you guys of how do you get out out of your uh, tutorial hell okay i'm gonna show you in real time how do you do it are you guys ready with me smash the like button if you're ready to see how to get out of tutorial hell like you know at least one like come on guys you guys can't do one like for how to get out of tutorial hell live reenactment on coding after 30 channel this is how you get out of tutorial hell here i am i'm in tutorial hell I'm looking at these tutorials. I'm like, what tutorials? Oh my God, I need to do this tutorial. Like, I don't know enough before building my own thing. I need to build this tutorial. I need to build this tutorial. No, you don't. You don't need to build this tutorial. What you need to do is you need to open up your terminal and you need to go make directory. Uh, my first actual project, right? And boom. You start making your thing. You CD into my first project and you probably do NPM in it because I don't know, you guys want to do that. And then you do touch index.html. And if you don't know how to do that, Google it and look it up. Uh, why is it complaining? Sorry, name can only contain URL friendly characters. I don't like, oh, wait, 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 because I didn't finish the get in it. Okay, once you finish getting it, you do NPM, you know, you do, come on, come on, computer. You create your first, you create your first, I can't type on the pressure, you create your first index HTML file, touch, I can't spell touch because I'm Russian, we don't know what touch means. And then you go into your code editor and you open up your beautiful code editor. Let me move it to the screen. And yes, I trust my own goddamn computer. And that's it. I'm out of uh, tutorial hell. You're welcome. I, I taught you how to get out of tutorial hell. And you start coding. You start doing your thing, HTML. I got like, you know, and you start. Look, and you do a little H1 tag, J1. I'm thinking like J1 visa for my, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm thinking. My first project. Yes, I did my, look, I'm no longer in tutorial hell. Why? Because I'm not using, I'm building my own goddamn project. You know, that's how you get out. Uh, you know, and then you could like preview your phenomenal project in live server. And boy, doesn't our project look ugly. But there, I did it. I got out of tutorial hell and I'm now building my own project. And this is what you gotta do. And yeah, this is hard. And you might get as far as this before you get stuck. You might literally get stuck on the first step. But you know what? You gotta force yourself to keep building. You gotta force yourself, taking yourself out of the comfort zone. Like, if I keep holding your hand, you will always want me to hold your hand. You need to let go of my hand and try to walk on your own. And this is what you guys have to do. And so I just in real life reenacted how you get out of tutorial hell. And that's how you do it. Some people are going to be Paul, you're a jerk. That wasn't even that funny. But that's how you do it. Like you wanted a simple answer. I gave you a simple solution. Um, but you got to build stuff. You got to develop the skill. You got to continue to learn. You got to continue to grow. You got to do like all this stuff. So we talked about, you know, what I mean by saying no, how you got to really set constraints in your learning and only learn the things that you need to know to get your first job and not try to get, you know, attracted by all this cool technology all around you. Like if you know JavaScript, don't learn TypeScript, right? Unless, you know, like plain and simple, you know, so the most basic, you can't go wrong with fundamentals. If you're looking to, you know, get into web development, you need to learn HTML, CSS. You need to learn JavaScript. You need to learn a framework like React. And then you got to build stuff until the stuff that you build is good enough to convince someone to hire you. That's that plain and simple. And I can't stress that enough. That's kind of what we have to do. That's what we have to do. So,
That's a good question from Origin01. Is it valuable to turn Photoshop or Figma web design into actual website, web apps? Can we feature these kind of projects? 100%. By the way, that's exactly what you're going to be at work. And so what Origin is saying is that if someone gives you a mock-up, and by the way, you don't even have to create those Figma files. Like I know uh, a lot of people do this, uh, but what I like, and I was kind of like, let me come back to my screen here. Where I had, so a lot of times what I like to do, I like to go to Theme Forest and you don't even have to look up Figma mockups. You can, you could type Figma and actually, Fig Am tells the Fig Am, and you'll be able to see like bunch of stuff, like for, like from Figma. You're gonna get something like this, and this is kind of exactly what you're going to get from your job. And you know you could open it and look. I don't even have to buy this file, and go through the process. See if you could recreate this front page. See if you could create this menu. So if you could take and doesn't like like something like simple like this, like a basic mock-up. And this is a good practice. If you're learning to code, this is exactly what you should be doing. You should be finding some Figma files. You don't even have to, like you're not a web designer. If you're a web designer, then it'll be different. But if you're a web developer, you don't have to create these Figma files yourself or Photoshop mock-ups. Just find, and look, I don't even have to buy this. I could see this here. And then basically see if you could recreate the site with HTML and CSS. And then eventually add some JavaScript or recreate this using React. And if you could do that, guess what? You're job ready because this is what you're going to be doing at work. This is what you be going to you uh, do at work. And Behance and Dribble are also good. And I think like they're really good if you're more interested in web design. Uh, I like Theme Forest for two ways number one i could search by highest earned or the most popular ui stuff so like i literally like to go here um if i'm looking for websites right you could like i'll do all themes let's say e-commerce themes and this is what i do um you know this has 12 sales okay that's 40 sales so what i'll do is i'll search by Where's like, there's a filtering option. I can't find it. Where's the weekly, oh, they're showing a different blah, 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 blah. Let me do like Shopify, big browse, best, browse best sellers. I'll do browse best sellers. Look, this has 2.9K. So you know this has got to be a good design. So I will look this up. I will preview the item. And I would study like, like uh, let's say I'll open this one and I'll study the layout. Like it has tons of uh, sales and, you know, and I look at this and then I, like for e-commerce, you know, and then I will learn to recreate this with HTML and CSS first. And what's great when you preview stuff, if you're kind of not sure how they did it, you could go to your inspector right you could inspect different elements you could be like okay what did they do here you could look at the css that they wrote and you could learn and practice recreating popular websites that you find it doesn't even have to be on theme forest and build those things and if you could do that you know you're literally developing a skill that you're going to get paid for at your job i hope that makes sense but that's what i do Yep, and some companies like require cover letters, but a lot of them don't. Like, I definitely just as long as you have a resume for sure. <laughs> yeah, it makes me feel like a hacker for sure. I hack my own self with my terminal. Yeah, it's like riding a bike without training wheels 100%. 100%. And we already talked about. Uh, throw them into the jungle but like one little piece at a time like I'm not saying recreate everything like like I showed in the before example I went to this website on Keystone right because I, I like I just 
I was using Keystone in the project. I was like, oh, wow, this is actually a pretty cool layout. I'm like, how did they, oh, I like how they did this timeline. Like, how did they do it? I inspect the elements. And then I went in CodePen and I recreated like my own version of what they did. And what this is, and I did it with style components and React. And what this is teaching you is basically building stuff from scratch off a mockup. And you could cheat a little bit by using inspect elements if you are learning to kind of learn about like how did I do that and little by little you'll be able to know more and more and more until you'll be able to create stuff yourself without a problem and that's what I would recommend is front-end development the only path to break into the field and no it's not in my opinion it's something that I wanted to do and in my opinion it's slightly easier path to get into but you could do like database management that's one way but, you know, if you're a very visual person, like database or backend uh, is a little bit like database management is a good one. Uh, backend dev is good, but you need to learn a lot for backend. So that's why I chose to do frontend first. And I recommend people do frontend stuff, um, you know, until you get really good, get a job and then switch to backend. But if you like, like you have the mind for backend, you're want to work with like a lot of logic like for instance in front end you might have to just figure out how to create logic that will display ui but if you're working on a back end you might have to write something like okay i need to write this formula that goes through a bunch of data and then adds it and you know returns specific thing from the whatever like you, there's a lot more data management so if you're gonna like a lot of people say you need to know algorithms and data structures. Yeah, you eventually have to learn them. But in the front end, not so much. But if you're doing back end, that's something for sure you're going to have to work on and learn. Because in the back end, um, you're literally working on the back end logic that makes the front end application work. So it's harder. You need to learn more. So it's not impossible. But just be prepared to do the work, 100%. So I know that it's not impossible. But in my case, because I'm not that smart, starting with back end first, would have been like a very hard thing for me to do and it would probably take me much longer to break into the field rather than front end. But if you like back end, if you're excited about, you know, writing back end code, you don't like HTML and CSS, you like working with a database, you like doing that stuff, it just makes sense to you, then doing back end is fine and you'll definitely be able to get hired. It's no problem at all, 100%. Like I just talk about front end because that's how I did it because I knew my weakness that learning backend would be difficult. And now I'm transitioning into full stack development uh, because I know the front end, uh, working with the front end and working with other people's API. I could understand like what an API is. I understand that there's a back end that, you know, creates these endpoints that you connect to. And then I get like, oh, the API is actually underneath the hood. It's looking this up in the database. And then little by little, I transition into full stack. And so now I'm able to create my own API and, you know, but I would have never been able to do that from the beginning. It just would not happen. Yeah, and so, yeah, you know what I mean? So there's many paths and to be honest with you, anybody that says to you, look, this is what you got to do. Don't do that. Do this. Only this because I'm the smartest person online. Ah! And they like, just tell you like, you got, blah, blah. you know, they don't listen to that person. They're full of shit. Like there is no cookie cutter approach. It's the same thing. Like, you know, for health, it's like keto is the only way to lose weight or, you know, low carb paleo diet is the only way or just eat meat or, you know, high, like, no, like, there's many ways to reach your goal. You just have to figure out a path, stick consistent to it over a period of time because it's going to take some time. You can't just magically get the job and do what you need to do and you're going to get there. So I chose to do it with React with JavaScript. I know somebody could have done it with SQL and Python. You know what I mean? As long as you commit and you do that one thing, you're going to get there. There is no cookie cutter approach that fits all. You need to find your path. I just talked about my experience. I talked about what I did. And I know there are some overlapping themes that are going to help you, but you need to really figure out what steps you need to take for your particular case. 
Techno Utopia, hello again. Well, hello, Techno Utopia. Good to see you on the live stream. The live stream was all over the place, it was ridiculous, but that's okay. That's how these unscripted Saturday streams are. And that's what makes them fun. A lot of you guys did not know I was a Zumba instructor before. We found that out earlier in the live stream, or that I had a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, YouTube channel. And why I gave it up is for those of you guys who join us a little bit late, we talked about this idea early on, why uh, you need the most important thing that you could learn to do is to say no, to say no to certain things that are time wasters. And it could be something like watching a lot of Netflix, or it could actually be something within tech. Like for instance, you're a beginner, you're learning HTML, CSS, and then someone says to you, you need to learn Storybook. No, you don't. You don't need to learn Storybook at that point. You need to learn the most basic things that are required for you to get a job. So if you don't know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, there's no reason for you to learn TypeScript. If you know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and you start learning React, when you're learning React, if you're still new to React, there's no reason for you to even attempt to do Redux. It's a waste of your time and it's going to slow down your learning. Learn the tools that already exist in React to help you accomplish the goals. Don't learn Redux because some YouTuber or me or somebody at the Udemy or some tutorial used Redux. If you don't know the problem Redux is using, then you don't need it. And that's what I kind of said to uh, you know say no to. And when you're learning to code, like... It, don't try to go broad. Try to have a narrow path that leads to you getting your first job. And for me, it was React and JavaScript. For somebody else, it could be, you know, doing SQL database management. There's plenty of jobs out there and managing databases. Like, it really depends up to you. But I still feel that the best way to get your front end, uh, to get your foot in the door is front end development. And by the way, if you're learning to code, uh, the best way to make a difference in your and um, learning um, is by building. And I gave some examples. And I'll kind of, if you've already been here for a while and you've seen this example, but one example that I just briefly shared is here's a website, Keystone JS. And what I did is I just explore it in with the inspector, I find different components, I see how they build it, I look at the code, I look at the CSS, and then in CodePen, right, I like re, like try to see if I could recreate the components they built by myself. And if I get stuck, the cool thing is I could use the inspect to see how they did it and what they used. Um, for instance, like this was an interesting implementation they used before and after. Um, and I ended up doing it like using before and after also by doing it slightly different than the way they did it. And this is a great way for you guys to practice building uh, your own stuff. Uh, you know, when you're learning, you've really got to, uh, every opportunity you have, make sure that you're walking away from tutorials and you're really trying to build stuff on your own and going from there. What's the difference between a website and a web? That's a great question. Um, I think like in my understanding, I could be completely wrong. A website, they could be something like a coffee shop website, which just basically have a presentation view. People are able to log in. They're able to see like when the coffee shop is open. Maybe they'll see some blog post. A web app would be something that not only presents the information, but also has some functionality. Um, a web, like, you know, like, to me, a, like, Twitter app that allows you to, you know, see your messages, tweet stuff, that's a web app. It's not just a simple website. You know, if it has some other functionality outside of presentation where people just see the information, in my opinion, that's a web app. Yeah, by the way, great question. So I'm going to start doing one-on-ones um, and I'm going to charge people, obviously, starting next month. And I've done some one-on-ones before and everybody's telling me, Paul, you're a great teacher. Just get out there and do it. But I'm still like nervous and believe it or not, as confident as I come off on my streams, I still have lower self-esteem of myself, partly because of my age. I'm 41. I started to code late in life and I feel like like I still don't know anything but everybody that I talk to 
encouraged me and or everybody that I coach they're like Paul you definitely know what they're doing everything you've done has helped me so much so I'm going to start doing uh, one on one starting next month and charging for them but this month and for anybody that's interested I'm looking to test out my philosophy on teaching so if you want to get some free one on ones this month email me at coding after 30 trying to spell my own goddamn email right coding after 30 at gmail and schedule some time with me and i uh, just go to coding after 30 at gmail i don't know if it showed up in the comments the way i want it and i will jump on um jump on with you on zoom and we could do it and i'll tell you like there's two types of like things that i do um in terms of one-on-ones yeah so just send me an email according after 30 at gmail this month they're free i am ridiculously crazy why am i doing it because i want to test out my teaching methodology i think it's excellent i don't want to go in too much detail into it uh but um i think it's good i think like i've got a lot of good feedback um just be ready that you're going to be doing majority of the work and I'm going to guide you to success, but I'm not going to make it passive. It's hundred percent active learning, uh, where you are going to be participating more, uh, than you think you want to, but that's the key. Your participation is going to make that knowledge stick. So email me at coding after 30. Nice. You just sent me an email. Obviously I can't reply it right now. I'm in the live stream, but I will get back to you hundred percent. So take advantage of that because this month it's free. And again, I'm allocating, you know, 10 hours a week for, uh, the lesson. So if I get a bunch of people, um, you know, it's basically first come first serve. So take advantage of that. It's absolutely free. Um, and let me kind of come back to this comment here with your one-on-ones. What are the, some things you covered? So there's, uh, three type of things that I do. The first type is helping you guys either learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or React. And it all leads uh, towards becoming job ready in React because that's kind of what I'm best at. And this is something that I feel people could get jobs quicker with. And so I'm not gonna teach you something that I'm not comfortable with teaching, but that's the first. It's helping you guys go from HTML to just enough JavaScript to like, and we'll always learn JavaScript, by the way. To get to react so you could be job ready with react and it's all going to be uh you actively learning through building stuff that i asked you to build and when you fail that's when i step in and help you to find the not show you how to do it but to guide you how you could do it yourself by telling you through feedback and teach you the stuff that you're missing, but at the same time also show you how can you find that information yourself. So my goal is to get you job ready as quickly as possible and stop paying me money for tutoring. Like most tutors, they want you to come to them and spend the whole year, two years, three years because they want to keep you as a student. My goal is to have you come to me and then as quickly as possible to be like, I don't have to rely on Paul anymore. I'm glad that he helped me. I'm glad that I paid him money, but I could do this stuff on my own now. That's my goal for the stuff. Um, but that's one way. The second type of tutoring I'm going to do is suiting you guys through making sure you have a portfolio, making sure you have LinkedIn, making sure you have everything that your resume, make sure that you have the necessary items to look, uh, attractive to a potential uh, person who wants to hire you. And before we even gonna go into algorithms and data structures, I'm not even good at those because those are very specific to certain companies like Google, Amazon, 100%. But for a lot of companies, like if you don't have a, something to present that actually gets you interviews and you can't even get an interview, all that other stuff is irrelevant. If you can't talk about your code, when people ask you like why did you write that function if you can't tell them like what that function does you're not ready for algorithm data structures like my goal is to get you guys job ready where you could build stuff that they ask you to do and that's what we cover but 
I'm kind of sidetracking in the second like type of course, it's all about how to present yourself to a potential uh, employer to make yourself look attractable. So if we have to improve your resume, we will work on your resume. If you have to improve the type of portfolio project you have, we're going to work on that. If we have to improve on your comfort being able to talk into the interview by doing mock-up interviews, we're going to work on that. And the third type, it's not even... Uh, one on one, like because when I don't like if someone comes to me, Paul, I'm working on this project and I'm having this issue. To me, that's a consultation. You're consulting me about the project that you're building, and so that's not a one on one. That's a consultation, and so that's gonna be something different. Because when I'm teaching, it's gonna be very specific, and the goal of the teaching is not for me to solve your problem. My goal through the teaching is to teach you how to solve your goddamn problem because I want you to be able to get the confidence that you need to do things on your own so you, uh, you don't need hand-holding and you could get the job yourself. I hope that makes sense. It's, it, it, that's the approach. And if you guys are interested in the one-on-ones for one month, you know, from this month to the 15th of the next month, I'm going to do free one-on-ones to kind of like make sure I ironed out the methodology that I came up with for learning and also get some feedback, make sure that it is the best way. I, I know it's the best way. Like I'm just going to say it is the best way. No, it it's, it's a pretty good way. Like to be honest, I wish I had somebody that taught me this way as I'm going to be teaching you guys. It is phenomenal. So, so coding after 30, email me. Coding after a Gmail if you want to do that. Yeah, 100%. Like, real dancing is so hard. It's so competitive. But a bunch of, like, people, if you already know how to dance, just guess what? It's not, I don't know if Zumba is popular now. This was, like, seven years ago, eight years ago when it was at the top of its thing. But creating a business around dancing for fitness, 100%. Really good. Yeah, is it? Yeah, I have a bunch of tabs open because I just randomly open tabs because I'm like, oh, I want to talk about certain topics. And if I get to them, I get to them. If not, but yeah, also, like, yeah, you will have a bunch of tabs open as a developer because you're reading so much documentation that you're referencing as you're building. Do I understand big O notation? I broadly understand big O notation. I broadly understand the algorithms and why they're important. And by the way, where do I stand with algorithms? You all will have to learn them. The only difference with me is that don't learn algorithms if you can't build anything, right? At my job, I build stuff, I get paid for it. And sometimes, like in my last example, I did need to know some basic algorithms to decide what is better. Was it better for me to use a recursive function to solve my goal? Or was it better for me to use an iterator like a for loop to solve my goal and what's the difference and basically based on the big O notation in terms of the recursive function it has basically quadratic kind of growth basically with each time it loops it, it it becomes more expensive more expensive more expensive so if the data size is huge using recursion in my case was not the best example where um with uh Iterator is was much nicer and in that case like for my company because we use big data that did come into play But by the way, like this is something that will come up at your job And please understand I'm not a junior developer anymore. I'm more of a mid-level So as a mid-level and especially this is more for a back-end type of logic that becomes more important So if you can't build anything uh, learn to build something, but please don't get me wrong like we will all have to strive to get better at algorithm and data structures because at the end of the day, especially as you get to mid-level and senior level, you will need to know if the code you wrote is the best Im implementation of the solution that you want to implement and you want to be able to make sure that you understand if there's a faster way to do something, you're going to obviously pick a more performant way. But you will learn that all as you progress forward on your journey. Teresa, so like this is a good question. Do working on copywriting SEO skills help if we enjoy doing it? So 
it depends. Like if you want to go freelancing and you want to start your own business, those skill hundred percent will help you. If you're looking to break, even though you enjoy it, because I enjoy jujitsu, but I stopped doing jujitsu. I also used to do a lot of copywriting and SEO. I stopped doing that because my goal became to get a job as a JavaScript and React developer. So I stopped doing jujitsu. I stopped doing SEO. I stopped doing that stuff because my goal is very particular to get hired like this was before I got hired as a developer and I only did the things that would lead me to getting hired. So skill in copywriting and SEO will allow you to be able to market and sell your own services because you could write your own copy, you know how SEO works, so you could market yourself, but it's not gonna help you to get hired at a job as a developer. It will get you hired as a copywriter and then and create SEO and where this skill becomes important if you apply to marketing companies which build sites with Squarespace or WordPress where knowledge of development is not at the top of the list. So with your basic HTML, CSS knowledge, plus your copywriting and SEO, you are a valuable employer, employee for those particular companies. But as a true developer, working at a company where you'll be writing you know, React code, uh, you need to just focus on React and JavaScript code. I hope they answer uh, helped. So I'm not going to build any native apps per se, like let's say using uh, Kotlin to build like Android apps or using whatever Apple's using these days to build iOS. But because I'm a React developer, I will make an app using React Native. Uh, as one of my projects. But for a job, like right now, I'm literally focused on React and Next.js. After I finish building a couple of projects that we're building with React and React, uh, not React.js, but uh, Next.js. After I build projects with Next.js, I wanna integrate a native app using React Native for Android and Apple. So that is something I'm gonna do, but not using something specific for native application. So Joshua, great question. I'm considering building an e-commerce website with just vanilla JS and Firebase. Is Firebase a good option? I haven't started learning back end, so I'm trying to use Firebase as a substitute. Firebase is good because it will allow you to do that. But, but here's my caveat. Like Google, how many jobs in your local area use Firebase as a database? And there's not that many. So like, and this is why I stopped using Firebase is because there's no jobs that really use Firebase. Firebase is amazing. Don't get me wrong. I love Firebase. But if you're learning, you want to stick to things that actually people are using. And the most common database is uh, SQL. So what I would recommend, it's going to be pretty much same amount of learning, maybe even easier, is to use something like Strapi. And this is something that I do on my Tuesday night stream at 7 p.m. Central Time. I'm building a project where for my back end, I set it up with Strapi. And you could learn more about it by going to uh, strapi.io. And basically allows you to set up a really fast API that will definitely allow you to create your e-commerce site. Now, that's what I would recommend. Because with this, and this is something that I'm using on my project, I'm running Strapi, I'm hosting out Heroku, and I'm using an SQL database because these are databases that are very common in our workplace. And both companies that I worked, we used SQL databases. And so this is something that will help you. So you could use Strapi. Now, in terms of building an e-commerce site with vanilla JS, I think... I, I wouldn't do it because the majority of places, they're not going to do that. They're going to use some sort of, you know, front end framework because for complex apps like that, rendering becomes an issue and that's already solved by Angular, Vue or React.js. So what I would say, you could build out parts of the components with vanilla JavaScript just so you kind of get the basic knowledge. But I would say if you're familiar with React, start learning React and build your e-commerce store with React instead. Because at the end of the day, most companies, unless they're working on legacy code or there's a specific reason why they need to use vanilla JS, um, they'll be using something like React or Angular or Vue. So that's what I would say. I think once you build it in React, uh, you could go back and 
build some of the commodes with vanilla JavaScript to be like, oh, I got the practice, I kind of get it. But to build a complete application, it's going to take you way longer because you will have to write more code. And there's a lot of gotchas you're going to get when it comes to re-rendering stuff with vanilla JS that React solves out of the box. I hope that helps. Um, so, and that's kind of what I'm doing for my project uh, that I'm currently building. I'm using React and Strapi on the back end and Postgres as a uh, database. Yeah, your one-on-one -on -one coaching program of how do you present be legit. So if you want to get some free coaching, it's only for the next 30 days. I'm making this announcement today. Um, send me an email. It's uh, and I'm probably jumping around the questions a bit, so I apologize for that. But it's send me an email at codingafter30 at gmail.com, literally codingafter30 at gmail.com, and uh, we could schedule some stuff. Yeah, no whining allowed, 100%. I mean, you could whine, but don't whine like in public. I mean, keep it to yourself. Um, we must sacrifice and get after it, 100%. Listen, yes, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it, paid one-on-one. -on -one. Schedule one free one with me. Uh, Kurt, like, I just want to give back to the community. Like, obviously, I also want to make money. Don't get me wrong, but I... Want to make sure that I provide massive uh, value, but also jumping on and doing a free one. It's not that like, oh, you guys are going to get a free lesson, but you also get to give me feedback. Give me feedback and kind of like, so when I do start pay, doing paid one, I want to make sure that it's top of the line. You're getting exactly what you need to make the progress as fast as possible. Technical Utopia, love it. Love the emojis. And will you also help working developers do a better job? Yeah, 100%. Please understand that I'm not a master. I'm still in my journey. Um, you know, I got hired. So, like, the good news is I'm still in the trenches. I'm still making mistakes. And I feel like I'm more qualified to give people feedback because the same trouble you're going to run into, I probably had, like, a week ago. You know what I mean? So, it's still fresh. Uh, but with that being said, like, I'm going to give you help in terms of how to become a better developer, but it will be within my scope of knowledge. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna teach you guys stuff that I don't know. Uh, interested for sure, awesome. DXC, hey guys, great to see you here, fantastic. Yeah, Brian, I didn't wanna call you out at the beginning, by the way, but thank you for the shout out. Yeah, Brian has, like had my one-on-one, -on -one. it was amazing. I'm doing bothering with him though, because he's into music, I love music too. Uh, once in a while, I try to make a song, they all suck. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys ever saw my music video I made uh, randomly. I post on this channel. But, you know, uh, he really enjoyed it. And, Brian, was it hands-on? Did you 100% participate 100% of the time? Let me know in the comment. Because that's how you guys going to get better. Participating and doing the work. Big B420, hello, what's up? Everybody's saying hello, hello. Hola DXC, everybody's saying hello to DXC because he's joined us. Hello, hola DXC, all right. Uh, what are your thoughts about GitHub Copilot? Have you tried it? No, devs will not make less money with Copilot. Copilot is amazing. The best video that I saw on Copilot, I'm going to find it right now. Um, I got to remember, I'm bad recalling stuff sometimes because I've been punched and I had so much, but it's easy to find because. I like to show love to the channels I appreciate. Uh, let me find the channel. And if you forget what channel it is, you could go to uh, my channel on YouTube. Scroll to like the channels. Uh, Jack Harrington, he created an awesome video, co-pilot. And he has a video called Will Co Copilot. Co it's gonna take your job, or really just the most boring parts of it. So yeah, so Will Copilot take your job? Jack Harrington make made an amazing video. I suggest you guys check it out. Let me, uh, like, you could find his channel through the channels that I have in mind, or just search Jack Harrington. If you haven't subscribed to his channel, amazing channel to subscribe. And when you watch his video, put in the comments that coding after. 30 recommended you um, just because you know whatever why not you don't have to do that whatever it doesn't matter like uh, but this is an amazing video and in this video he talks about that 
it's not going to take away your job. What it is going to do is automate the boring stuff and make you write better code. Like for instance, it's just like grammar check in English, but a little bit more complex. So in a sense, what Copilot is going to do is going to give you code suggestions. But here's the thing. Here's the, the thing that like why it's not going to take your job. Uh, it's not going to take your job because the suggestion that it's going to give you, you have to know what it is. Like you have to know how to write it yourself to understand that it works. So if it suggests code. You can't just click enter, 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 enter and expect your code to work. You have to review the code that it suggests and make sure, oh, this is right or no, this is not what I'm looking for. Like you need to make the final decision at the end. And that's why Copilot won't take your job. Uh, yes, and I meant to say Swift for Apple, amazing. React Native is my ultimate goal. Yes, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, learn React, and then jump into React Native right away, 100%. Yeah, they prepare it ahead of time and they build clones and they don't like, I mean, like they make good content, like they do good stuff, but they're also really good at sales and like whatever, whatever. But the point is like, I'm not a big fan of like, I like clone projects for free on YouTube because it's fine. Like you learn some stuff, they're entertaining, but if you're building a project for a portfolio, that's not a good uh, project idea because Everybody who's seen that video probably build that clone and probably put it in your portfolio. You want to build something that stands out. But how do they um, make those fast is that they make that ahead of time. They have the notes. They don't live code it. They live code it by looking at the pre-made stuff they already made, referencing the code and putting it and running it and the reason they do that not just because they don't know what they're doing they know what they're doing because when you live code and you run into a mistake it could take hours to solve so they write the application first they make sure that it not has mistake because they don't want to waste your time they might have some little bugs but not anything code breaking that's going to require a lot of hours because they want to make sure that within two three hours they could build a clone um and you could learn something from it and at the end of the day they're still building the clone, but they're also plugging in their boot camp or whatever they are doing because they know that three hours of clone is not going to teach you to be a developer. It's just enough to kind of spark your interest. I love stuff like that. I would never build clones myself. I'm all more for because there's so many YouTube channels that already do it, and I don't care about you cloning stuff. I care about you guys building stuff from scratch. Hey, DXT, uh, Paul, please talk a little bit about the workflow. I mean, uh, how the work is oriented by a boss and how is it delivered? So I'm at my current job responsible building the full implementation of the application we're building. I work for a finance company and I'm building an application that allows them to manage loans that are in the, like some state of default, whatever. Um, and the way it works, and there's a senior... Uh, developer who checks my code just in case like I do something completely crazy gives me feedback and then I refactor but ultimately I'm responsible for implementing the design and what they do basically we start with a meeting and they'll assign my task we do everything in sprints a sprint is a week and basically they'll assign a bunch of tasks for me for that week and then I see if I accomplish them in a week or not if I don't accomplish certain tasks within that week, it'll get pushed to the next week and also kind of allows us to kind of see how much work can I do. So it's a way to gauge how much work I'm able to do a week. But the way my meetings go, we have a designer, he'll give me the mock-up, then we have the owner and our senior engineer who tells me, okay, this is the functionality we need. They won't tell me what I need to code. They just tell me this is what we want this thing to do and I'm responsible to create the UI and then I'm responsible to create the functionality. And so for me, it's kind of like stressful because my last job, there was a existing code base where I could have seen the example. But in this case, a lot of that logic I have to write myself. But that's kind of what I do at my current company and maybe it's not typical of a big company uh, but I work for a very small company where they just do a daily meeting. They tell me what I have to do. And then 
it's my responsibility to do it and make sure that I hit those deadlines. Hopefully that made sense and answered your questions. Yeah, building a good process, 100%. Yeah, and Brian is referring to our one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, he did 100% of the work, 100%. And he learned a bunch because he did the work himself. And when he didn't know something, instead of spin, spin, spoon-feeding the answer, I kind of showed him where to find the answer. And when he found the answer, only then I elaborated on the stuff. And by the way, sometimes there's stuff I don't even know, so then we could both find the answer. But 100%, you guys are going to learn a ton. So, guys, man, by the way, if you guys didn't smash the like button, a lot of you guys smash the like button. I appreciate all of you guys. You guys are beautiful. Like, let me just like let me just stop talking about myself, Let's talk about what we do on this channel. Let me talk about you guys. First of all, I want to thank all and every one of each of you for jumping onto the live stream Especially if you hung out the whole two hours. It's like phenomenal. It's amazing. You guys are so awesome that like I I love doing these live streams. You guys are so positive. Like thank God my channel is so small that I don't get a lot of trolling yet. And eventually I'm sure it happens. But I am so glad to be part of you guys about the community. Talk about like everything you do. And thank you. Thank you so much. Again, thank you guys enough. I hope that you reach your success. I hope you guys accomplish all the things. And I hope, I really hope that the value I provide on this channel really, really helps you to at least stay motivated, if anything, and maybe even change your life. And talk a little bit about a mock-up and how to deploy them on your VS Code. I mean, start coding starting from mock-up. I mean, basically what I do is I get the mock-up that I get and then I'll draw boxes around it you know and then what i will do and actually let me show you like like an example of one, one thing that i wrote because this is a it's an old article that i wrote but it outlines kind of like the process of how i do that a little bit it's not on the whole website but it's just a small form yeah i have a website where i should be blogging but i'm too lazy to blog i write an article a year so i wrote this article um this one last year very proud of it and then i wrote this article this year and maybe next year i'll have another article that i wrote you know i kind of set realistic expectations for me but let me go here so this is i built out a basic page but anyway this is just this example i want to show you so whenever i get a mock-up a lot of times if you get something Figma, they'll have more information, but I just got a my work Photoshop file. So it was up to me to like imagine this is a Photoshop file you got. So it's up to me to kind of decide what's what. So what I do is I draw boxes over all the different elements, you see, and I break them down to components. And this could be a div, you know, this could be, you know, a input like it could be another div with the input and the label and all this other stuff i break it down into basic components and you know this is a react example but yeah actually i just wanted to show you this image because all the other stuff is the code and then i will write the code so i'll break it down into boxes and then each one of those boxes is pertaining to an element either a div or a section or an input and then i would code that out in my terminal then i would add the css to make it look like the thing it is and then if it's react then i would add the functionality to it and go from there and when that's done i will add it and by the way if you want to know more about it join us on the tuesday night streams where i'm coding our, our community one project and usually on that stream that's where i give more detail like i talk about how i came up with this and um, I kind of did it quick and dirty. So I basically went ahead and created a simple mock-up because I didn't want to waste time. So basically, I created this mock-up. First thing I did, I created like what do I want my minimum viable product to be? What is the first implementation? So I decided that 
I want to be able to display portfolios of the website. I want to be able to show pictures of the users. I want to have different routing. That means multiple pages. I want to have a login page. I want to add authentication to it. So I kind of, for the minimum, I want to create comments. I want to be able to add comments and add portfolio projects. So that's the basic foundation. So the first thing I do before I even do the mock-up is I decide the things that I want to achieve. The next thing I do before I even do the mock-up is figure out what data do I need in a database. So in this case, we needed a like, we needed a user portfolio or project and comments because those are all the things we did. Once I mock up my data like I did here and the thing that I want my app to do, I quick and dirty create my mock-up like this. And by the way, everything here, like, like this card, I'm like, okay, this is probably a container. This is another, you know what I mean? Like I draw boxes around everything. I don't have a drawing tool, otherwise I would have showed you. And then I code it out. So I did this simple mock-up and then you know, in my code, I started kind of working on this and let me go. Open that project for a second. So one moment guys so i created this i'll use the card example as a component i think we have it here somewhere yeah project card here let's take a look what it has inside the code so i'm using uh react bootstrap here so it's not gonna look like traditional uh html but that's okay So we have our card component, right? And this, like if you look at the card, I basically drew a bunch of boxes and, you know, we have the card, which is the out of box. Then we have our image. So I have our image here and I just, Build it step by step. It'll be kind of harder to explain all this in detail because it'll take good 15 minutes. But come to my live stream on Tuesdays where I talk through the code. Um, and that is specifically for that. So I'll be able to ask and answer questions better. But if you look at the, the projects that is rendered when you inspect it, you know, you kind of see that structured HTML. So you see I have my card and if you imagine in my mock-up, this is my card, that's my outer div. And inside that div, I have an image container. I have a footer, which is, which had, I don't know why I named it footer. I should have named it header. Uh, yeah, this should be header because it's on the head here, but I call it footer too. Semantically, it makes a difference, but for the code's sake, it doesn't. That has the, so that has the avatar and that has the like icon and the like functionality. So in my thing here, you know, I create a box around here. That's that footer container. And then I have the div for heading. So I break everything into boxes and then basically code it out. I, in the most simple sense, but join uh, the live stream on Tuesdays where we spend majority of the time just looking at code. So sorry that I couldn't give much more details more more details but that's kind of it so i'm not going to do webinars for all interested and one-on-one -on -one. and i mean i'm i will advertise them but what i'm going to do is literally schedule one-on-one -on -one on you and we're going to meet via zoom uh, so anybody who's interested literally just write me an email according after 30 at gmail.com and schedule time with me and we'll just do the thing and then I'm not going to do like a hard sell where I specifically do a webinar and talk about why you should take one-on-ones with me. But whenever I do videos and we talk about the price, I'll be like, hey, if you're looking for one-on-one, -on -one, I happen to do them. If you're interested, just connect with me. Like it's going to always be a soft sell. Uh, but I will, you know, brief you on like what is covered, you know, just so you know what to expect. Man. 
I love you. Look at that. I replaced my lo-fi music while coding tonight with this live stream. See? You know how to prioritize your time. You're coding and yet you're listening to Coding After 30 podcast. Thank you, Paul. No. Thank you. You are welcome. Yes. Here you go. I draw boxes to make this simple for me to look for containers and how to structure things. 100%. Like, this is what, like, made sense for me with HTML. Everything is a goddamn box. And once you kind of internalize that, whatever layout you get, draw a bunch of boxes in a way that it makes sense the, and assign HTML to it. And that makes it so much easier. Oh, yeah. I didn't use Figma for that because I literally... The mock-up that you saw, I like the one that I didn't try. Oh, I did it before the stream in two minutes. And I also wanted to make it quick and dirty because I didn't want Figma to be an excuse. Someone's like, I don't have Figma. I can't start this project. No, you could mock this out on a napkin if you had to. So the whole point of the Tuesday night stream is to cut through the excuses. You don't need Figma. You don't need anything. You just have to draw it out with like on a paper napkin and just start building. You know what I'm saying? I want people to understand that your first iteration doesn't have to be perfect. You could always go back and make it better. And this is kind of what we're going to do with the project that I'm building. We're going to do the quick and dirty get our minimal viable product to market, meaning deployed and get some users on it and then continue to coming back and refining. Oh, nice. Yandex in Russia. Nice. Privet, как дела? When styling, BAM is a must. Yes, like so BAM is like 100% important, especially if you're just doing regular CSS. Now, when you're using SAS, it is still good to follow but it doesn't be like it's not as much needed because now you could scope your styling within uh sas so you, you know because you could do um nested css and then if you're using something like i'm using on react uh style components then everything's scoped to that individual component so you're never worried about your css uh kind of uh seeping through but if you're doing like straight up css you better be using something like bam or bam 100 percent yeah um so guys um anyway we hit 816 my god my voice is starting to go we've been going strong two hours i i, I want to hug you guys hug you guys give you lots of love high fives a lot of like thank you guys for joining me on this amazing saturday and i think it'll be a good time to end you know, if you miss this live stream, you can always watch them again on my channel. They're like, they're all recorded. They're all available. And before you go, um, I've been honored to be invited to be a co-host on Coding Addict, John Smilga's podcast. You could find him on Coding Addict channel every Monday, 8 p.m. Pacific time. That podcast is way better than this one, by the way. He's more knowledgeable. I'm just there to give my two cents. Uh when i can but he's super knowledgeable and they're less uh crazy like these so a little bit more structure a little bit more to the point i just like to have fun on these saturday nights so make sure you guys check those out uh for sure and with that being uh said man all of you guys who are able to make it Drisa, you know big 420 joshua you know everybody dxt brian uh Eli, Techno Utopia, man, um, love every one of you guys. Thank you so much for jumping on. Lucky, like I appreciate your brother. Everybody who's here, man, much love. Origin, J JR Bugs, a bum few in the mayor. Fun. I gotta figure out how you pronounce that. That's that's phenomenal. Ahmed, great to see you. All the people that, like, I mean, I can't even scroll any farther, but a lot of you guys, Tech Rally stopped by, Coding Addict himself stopped by, Lucas stopped by, Web Dev, always amazing to have you, Andrew Lott, phenomenal, Coding Man Addict stopped by, Let Babe, Let Babe, Let Gabe equals true, man, all these people, no, like, thank you so much, guys, really appreciate the love, and... Thank you so much for everything. So with that being said, I am going to go and hopefully eat some dinner. But thank you so much. See you guys either on the Tuesday night live stream. 
7 p.m. Central Time or Monday on Coding Addict stream or next stream on Saturday. Let all the things that you want to accomplish happen to you this week. Stay motivated. Remember, we're here all about being positive, helping you guys achieve your goals because nobody wants negativity in their life. So thank you for being such positive viewers. And on that note, thank you and good night. And if you missed this, you could always rewatch it. But it's been two hours and I got to go. Hey, I always forget where the, the, the finish button is. I got so many tabs open, you know. But anyway, see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. Later. Bye, guys. Bye. See ya. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you. I always do crazy stuff at the end because I'm like, who's going to watch anyway? Sometimes I think, like, maybe I could nap. Get some view time. I should do R S R R what M R M S R what do you call that M S S R R M where they like drink coffee. <sighs> I hate those channels. Can't stand them. Anyway, I'm going. I'm going before this gets ridiculous. Thank you guys so much for the love. Love you. Take care.